We are very, very, very lucky to have world tour rider uh, Mia Griffin. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Keith. How are you? I am good. I am good. This is big news. This is a fairly important news, I think, from the fan point of view, um, and even briefly looking over the races that they were competing in last season. Uh, this must be tremendously exciting. Yeah, Not I I'm think. Explaining here, I kind of am a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> It, it it really must be tremendously exciting. Yeah, I I'm so excited about it to be honest. I think next year is going to be a huge, massively steep learning curve, but I'm excited to to throw myself in and learn so much from the girls who've ridden at this level and from all the teammates. And yeah, I'm I'm just excited to to be an Irish girl that's uh, going on nice. to a big team. Um, how does this come about? in a basic sort of way, um, not to get into too much details, obviously, but obviously, were you on the radar? Do, do talks like this happen or what's the general vibe for it to happen? Well, so I wanted to find a team that was based in Swiss because I'm going to be moving to Swiss next year yeah. and I have a few connections in Swiss now. So I was able to get my CV in front of the team manager and had some talks with him and met him in person and everything wow. and yeah I think originally he was kind of looking looking to me for maybe the development team but I think he saw that my numbers were good and that maybe I had some promise <laughs> that he'd take take a bit of a chance and and see what happens in these in these two years. Yeah, and it seems that like cycling really is a small world, so to speak. Um, but to fall into Switzerland, fall into that area, seems to be quite happy for you. You 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 know even area wise and that, uh, it it's coming up trumps really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think like it's a really nice place to train, and I think I'm really excited to just base base myself out of there for the next little while. It's on my um to do one of the many to do lists to go on a leisure cycle in there, um uh, because it's stunningly beautiful, you know. Oh, it yeah. really, really is. Um, but right. it's, it's, that's kind of how it happens. You, you you get on the radar. Your number is looking good. Did you think it was going to be first team, or were you thinking about developing team, or are you just put? Do you just put yourself out there? Yeah, I just kind of put myself out there and like sent my CV to a good few teams and just like kind of tried to find to find something and yeah, that's how. It is. And I think. See, we're talking. I think about sending sending a CV as in going for it, but it is going for a job, isn't it? It's, it's just yeah. <laughs> yeah, it fundamentally is the same thing. Like you as well, just have to write up like your. CV for cycling with your results with like a few pictures with your numbers and yeah then just kind of try and get it in front of the people that you can and hope hope for the best yes yeah, so you kind of wonder how these things happen and, and how they go about um but I was looking over some of the races that they were competing in last year and um there's big names there um, yeah, Spring Classics looks fairly, fairly amazing. Um, and that's just to start with. Do you have any hope, or is there any kind of thing that you are you just going to go in there going? Do you want, I want to learn. I want to ride races. Uh, I, I want to just advance. Is there is there anything there in the back of your mind that you would like to target? Let's say. I is think a question. <laughs> not, not really. I think I want to learn as much as I can, and I think I learn a lot riding for some of the girls as well um and in the big races kind of learning more about how to how to get up there at yeah. the top end of races and obviously there's some some big races that I dream about doing like the women's tour de france because yeah. it just took off last year and I think I think it really seems to be gaining momentum so that's something that would be really really cool to be part of and to be able to say that you did and say that you finished and were happy with how you performed it's incredible i think it's a good time to be hitting it you know what i mean i think it really is um and and like tour de france the last time it was in ireland was 98 i think is that the year you were born yeah which is which is depressing to me 
Um, and like talks of it coming back again in two years, which which again was going to be given a lot, a lot, a lot of buzz around here at the moment because it seems to be reacting very, very well to it. Um, it's a huge race, and and so the opposite then maybe a, a, it is a step up, isn't it? Going to this for for those of us who don't understand, you're obviously competing at a very, very, very high level and have been. Um, but is this like a move up again? Yeah, I think definitely. With the team I was with last year, we got into some really, really big races, some of the biggest races that are on the calendar. Yeah. So I think it's good to have experienced that level a good few times before, but but then it'll be good to be around a whole team that have experienced like racing at that level all year round and have maybe raced some of some of the girls have raced like 60 to 70 race days last year so wow. they've got so racing in their legs and so much experience that I think I can try and soak up and and really profit from so that's quite cool and exciting it's a nice way to look at it isn't it I, I'm going to learn mm. this and I'm just going to go in I'm, I'm going to take it all in um it's it's it seems like an incredible experience to to start back from from uh, from Kilkenny, which is a great place to go riding a bike. It is. I love those roads as as leisure, yeah. not as racing roads. I, I think the Rostamon was brutal this year. Yeah. Some, of, some of the courses look very very hard. Why cycling? What what brought you to cycling? Was it a club, or was it something that you just? Uh, what, what, how did that find you? Or you find it? So originally from when I was really young, I played camogie, which is quite the basic thing to do in Kilkenny because ev everyone plays hurling. You're, you're brought up with, uh, with a hurl in your hand from, from the age of like five or whatever. Yes. But I came to cycling at, I think I was 18 and I came to cycling because my mom is working in WIT in Washford. And um, she saw an advertisement in WIT. Actually, it was her colleague, Bruce, that saw the advertisement in WIT. And he passed on the the word to my mom and said, oh, do you know anyone who'd be interested in trying out for a talent transfer team? So basically, it was an initiative that Cycling Ireland set up in order to talent ID people from other sports and bring them into cycling. Oh. It's it's something that in in GB they did for rowing and some other sports. Yeah. So they wanted to try if they could kind of um if the same thing could work for track cycling for team pursuit. So then I did I did a test, a three minute test and a six second test on a watt bike in WIT and I didn't really have any clue what I was doing. I was just like three in a pair run. <laughs> three, three minutes is horrible. Like if I was to have to do that now, I, like it's, 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 it still hurts. Oh yeah. <laughs> it still hurts the same amount, maybe even more, but yeah, when you have no idea what you're doing, it's, it was kind of like, it was a strange concept. So I was just got up on the bike in in my runners and some run leggings and um did did my best and then from there I was one of eight girls that were picked to do a six week um training plan and then we were retested actually no I think there was more than eight because then they cut to eight after that sorry this is very long no, no, no. um <laughs> but, but it's fascinating just to see how these these things come about you know and it's actually it's a, it's a very good idea because you're super fit obviously from kamogi uh, yeah. and, and those other things it, uh, so the, yeah of course they could be transferable like mm. and then they cut it down to eight girls after the six week program plus a retest because they wanted to see the margin of progression from six weeks of training and I think if you progressed over a certain percentage or were just really good at, at a baseline in general then you're brought on to do some training camps and yeah those training camps were an introduction to cycling and at the time I joined um, Barrow Wheelers in New Ross the cycling club uh, they wear wear some birds as well and they taught me really how to ride a bike 
the the boys there um kind of giving me a crash course in uh in how to do endurance rides and stuff so that was that was quite cool it was and actually there is a simple thing there it's the same myself or anything like that actually clubs are very very good um and they can be very very welcome yeah you have pluses and minuses in x y and z but um i certainly found it even just for riding in a group and riding that way lads yeah the people are generally want to help you um it's a bit, it must be a bit of a baptism of fire though because you're going straight into tests straight into to pretty hardcore stuff i imagine uh, was it yeah. I suppose, enjoyable did you were you just kind of thinking this is an experience let's see let's see what we can do yeah I don't know I think I think with sport I was always like quite even when I played camogie I was quite serious about it I always would have been like doing my gym on the side I also did athletics as well so I kind of mixed the two and always was always was really serious about sport maybe not not a serious about school so it was always like <laughs> what I want it was the number one <laughs> And then when cycling came along and it was like an opportunity to just like do sport all the time, I was like, oh, brilliant. Let's do it. That And actually, I have to say that, that uh, as, as a program, um, yeah, no wonder it breeds success because you, you, you're just casting the net, aren't you? Um, and not focusing down one line to try and find cyclists. Um, yeah. Your first race or was it track you raced on first or was it a road you went into first or what way was that? What sort of an experience was that? I love asking people this question because it can be a real mixed answer uh, to how your kind of first competitive race was. Oh, yeah. One of my first competitive races was um, a track world cup after three or four months of being on a bike. And it was like a complete disaster, um, which looking back is kind of normal <laughs> yeah but um, yeah I remember just before it being nervous for like weeks before it which is like funny because like now if I had the same event I might just be nervous on the day not like this like week-long nervousness um yeah. so yeah definitely there was like people flying off all over the place like as in breaks in team pursuit and just like disastrous stuff wow. but we stuck with it and kept kept um going and it took us years to try and get better at it but got got better at it in the end yeah there must be a real love then for it because obviously you have to have that real sort of love to stick at something like that that's proper hard um is it the is it the training or is it the experience or is it the competition you're obviously competitive anyway um is there something there that kind of stands out or is it a whole package to kind of go yeah this is what i really love yeah i think i think it's kind of a combination of everything i think cycling is just very addictive i think anyone who who does it kind of knows that like as soon as you start like you do two hours then you just want to do three hours and then you want to be able to do three and a half hours and then you want to be able to do three and a half hours with threshold efforts or something you're always like constantly looking to the progression to do more. and then you go racing and you realize oh I'm actually not that great at this and then you're like oh I but I, I want to get better and then it's just like a constant kind of cycle of of that just wanting to do more cycling um, <laughs> yeah. that's really is a little bit of a baptism of fire but obviously there's something there that kicked on you moved on to tc racing yeah 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 right um yeah. and again is this just like a progression is this just is, is this the way it kind of moves on you you you, you just try and and, and find is it more like-minded people is it is, is it more opportunities or how would that come i think i just i just messaged tom and just asked him could i be on the team um and then he was really really nice with me around the races and everything and was really good for like giving advice on on some of the road races that I did and like was just was just really positive and all the girls were were positive as well They're so down bunch aren't they and that's what I find people want to give information and they want to give help and they want to see people generally uh, in the cycling in cycling scene anyway how was road racing then for the for, for the first time 
oh the first time it was terrible because I had no endurance so I'd like go absolutely he- like balls out for the first hour and then absolutely blow my doors and that was kind of like isn't that, that what everybody of- does <laughs> <laughs> yeah got kind of still still sometimes experience this as well but like I think it, it definitely was a deep end like I remember one of the races in Wicklow like uh I think it was the Lara Classic the first time I did it I was just like dropped quite early into it and just was slogging away on my own then for the race that's a but, super like, race though like, it super- really is you know um I think I only did it once and I hated it <laughs> and I wouldn't be anywhere near your level yeah <laughs> so um so progression 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 and kind of moved on from there where you actually ended up in Belgium yeah exactly um and yeah I remember my one of my first races in Belgium was um was one of the the semi-classics lace I'm in yes. uh I just remember like I was hyperventilating on every cobble section because I was just so 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 full gas and just didn't know like everyone said that like cobbles were were gonna were gonna be bad and I like I remember asking Alice in Mallorca she sometimes reminds me of this one day going over this tiny little cobble section and I said I said to her oh are the cobbles in Belgium like this and she said that like she didn't really want to answer me like saying no they're way worse <laughs> so she just yeah yeah they're just like that and then I got over to Belgium and to say that cobbles are like going over a load of like babies heads it's kind of that's what it that's that, what it's awful like question. track or road which one would you prefer uh, is that an unfair, I, again is that an unfair question no no I don't think that's an unfair question I think like I love like I love the track and there's definitely bits of the track that uh, that like I I love I love so much and yeah but then the road I don't know it's they're just different from each other as well they seem to be I had no knowledge of the track and I don't think a lot of people know a lot of the intricacies of, of track and things like that it's a completely different beast yeah um, it, it really is it's unbelievable to watch it's it's, it's yeah, absolutely totally incredible. understand no I think that the challenges are first of all you're kind of home sporadic so sporadically so you're just kind of like this random person that's part of your family that's like the person that just like pops in and is like hey I'm home again like look at me back (laughs) back the world and um yeah I think I think that part of it makes you feel like you're a bad family member because you kind you have to then when you're at home you can't be like oh they're like I'm going shopping and you're like oh I have a session I had a session this morning and I have another one this evening so I can't go anywhere in between because I have to rest like that's when you're just like you're like the boring family member then as well (laughs) um it's an astonishing commitment isn't it it well yeah it is it is a commitment definitely it's it is a, a big commitment but obviously the commitment is worth it when the rewards come, which the rewards come at a slow and kind of a, a slow rate. But when they come, they're really, really worth it. Yeah, sure, um, I, I would think. You were going out in the train ride, a playlist. What sort of music would you listen to? Oh, my music is really embarrassing. <laughs> no like, embarrassing to music. I was talking to somebody last night and I, I was I was telling that I was listening to No Doubt and Paramore. And he was kind of going, what? You don't. Of course I do. <laughs> the music that you like is the important thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I love I love um like Britney Spears or like a bit Beyonce or something. Yes. Um, nothing you- like would you be listening to uh, Taylor Swift's uh, album that she launched today or would that be on your radar in any way, shape or form? No, not at all, really. Some of her songs are good, but yeah, I she's not, not on the radar. So you are Britney, Britney, Beyonce, you want pop and, and you want uh, big songs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Big, big girl, girl power, power boss songs. 
do, do, when you're on the track, is he, do you always listen to a little bit of music beforehand, or, or is that is that vary from athlete to athlete? Yeah, I think definitely I like to listen to music warming up. I think there's not many people who listen who don't listen to music warming up. Yeah, it's it's just a tune out, really, is it? Yeah, and I think yeah, it's just I think it kind of like because because in the center of the track there's like everything going on it's so crazy it's nice to just have your like few minutes before the race to just be like in your headphones listening to your own music kind of away from all the chaos that's happening and just to be able to focus on yeah doing your warm-up um, yeah, off season what are you what's an off season treat to you um is it coffee and cake is it just completely not talking about cycling um or what are you looking forward to over the next let's say week or so yeah just being able to spend time with family and i went to a gig with my sister um and in, enjoyed that went up to dublin did a little bit of shopping and just kind of yeah switching off and leaving the bike aside and still I like to keep fit in other ways I like to do yoga and I like to run and do gym yeah but obviously and if I don't want to do anything in one day then I don't do anything and just let the body let the body back up again rest um so I think until then the most important thing is just to like to be able to switch off and I think being able to switch off is a, is a skill in itself and I think some people are really really good at it if, if I'm honest with you it like I'm it, it took me most of my life to be able to do it uh, and still I'm learning on it um it's incredibly difficult I yeah was quite uh, fast paced and it, but it's one of the, the most advantageous things to do, whether you're talking about sport or whether you're talking about any form, whether it's work, to be able to just daydream even or switch off or do something like that is is, is vital for well-being, I think. Um, uh, yeah, so it's it, it's a good thing. Um, you've been amazing. Um, it's fantastic news and the general feel and if this is true the general feel is it's, it's everybody's delighted for you um, oh. it, it, it's great it really is great to see um, so yeah kick ass go out there give it hell <laughs> 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 okay